Welcome to part three. Here we're going to briefly talk about how you could incorporate a motivational component within intensive intervention. So in this part, you're going to learn different methods for incorporating a motivational component, and then I'm hopeful that you'll think about doing this within your intensive intervention. So where are we? Our blue arrows are pointing to our DBI framework, and in this module, we're all really focused on instructional strategies that should be embedded within the instructional platform and that should be embedded um, within adaptations that we are making to the student's instructional program. So remember we have that instructional platform. Remember a long time ago, I drew, drew oh, I'll go ahead and do it today. I'm feeling like I'm a good drawler. We drew our person and we start with this instructional platform and then they dive into DBI from that instructional platform. Now when I'm thinking about that instructional platform, and now I have to go to the next slide, so I have to say bye-bye to our little stick figure there, um, I want to really include things that have evidence. So when I think about the evidence-based uh, strategies that I can use in terms of delivery of that instructional platform, we think about explicit instruction, multiple representations, and concise language. When I think about strategies that should be embedded within the instructional platform, I want to help students with their fluency building. We just talked about that. We also just talked about problem solving instruction. And right now, here we get to our motivation component. So the way to talk about this is really just to show you some examples. So let's go ahead and look at a few of them. Now this is a motivational component that comes from an intervention for first grade students. Here they were working on um, understanding the equal sign and solving different types of equations. So here is an example protocol from that intervention. And you can see then we get down here, the student writes five and they, they write that five. And I see a puzzle piece and it says, oh, you're working hard and following directions, you earn one puzzle piece. So the motivational component here is that students would get a puzzle piece throughout the lesson and then they would put those puzzle pieces on this puzzle and then later on color in the puzzle pieces. And then when students filled up this puzzle, they got to choose a very small prize from a prize box. Now why would we need this motivation component? So most of the time it's to keep students on task. It's to keep their attention during the lesson. Uh, we talk about, oh, you earn a puzzle piece when you're working hard, when you're on task, when you're paying attention. And if students are working hard and if they're on task and if they're paying attention, they're more likely to get through more of the lesson. They're more likely to be paying attention to the math. They're more likely to be participating in the lesson. And by doing all those things, they're more likely to learn more. So that's why a motivation component is important. Um, here's another example of a motivation component. This comes from a word problem co program called Pirate Math. This one works a little bit differently. Um, so here students were uh, tutored in intensive intervention in small groups. And so the tutor would start a timer, so at the beginning of the lesson, and set the timer for six minutes. And then if at the end of six minutes, when the timer went off, if students were paying attention and working hard and if they were on task, then each of those students would get a check mark here, okay? Then at the end of the six minutes, when we did that check, then the tutor would set a timer for seven minutes. And at the end of seven minutes, when that timer went off, if the students were paying attention and doing a good job, they would get a check mark. And then you can see at the end of 12 minutes. Now what you can see is that this varies day to day. So here are the timings for day 15, here are the timings for day 16. So students don't ever know when that timer is going to go off, so they always have to be displaying their, their best uh, academic behavior. And then here students could also earn checks for doing certain things on their worksheets and games and their problems at the end. And then the check marks would be added up and as students, as students earned a certain number of check marks, they would be able to earn a very small prize. Now another way to do a motivation component is to actually have it really match what's going on with the intervention. So this comes from a fourth grade fraction intervention. Um, the thing is all about fractions and fraction concepts. So here students for their motivation component can use dollars and half dollars. Then they have to add up their half dollars. Notice that the size of a half dollar is exactly one half of the size of the dollar. And so while students earn the, this fake money while going through the intervention and they can use the fake money to then um, by very, very small little prizes throughout the intervention. Um, it's also going back to the fraction concepts, which is what the intervention is all about. 
Another motivation component might just be students earning points. Um, so here's an example from an intervention called MathWise. Students can earn points throughout the lesson for answering problems correctly and being on task, displaying um, good behaviors, and then seeing how many points that they earn in a lesson. So you can see different lessons have different, uh, different point values. So the idea about a motivation component is that it's to keep students on task, it's to keep the attention of the students, and it's really meant to help students regulate their own behavior. So eventually, if they are learning how to keep themselves on task and to pay attention, you may not have to remind them all the time to sit squarely in their seat or to pick up their pencil or to, to look over here and that type of thing. So our activity for this part of our module is activity number seven. And I want you to read this intensive intervention about problem solving. And I want you to ask yourself, what is the motivation sim system? How is it introduced to students? And then how often is it used throughout the lesson? So our checklist for this part is pretty brief. Um, I want you to think about utilizing a motivational component when necessary. It might not be necessary to do this for all students or in all settings, um, but it usually is a nice thing to embed from the beginning uh, just to make sure that students are on task and, and paying attention to the mathematics that's occurring during the lesson. So I'd like you to do this discussion board and talk with your classmates. What motivational tools do you find most helpful? Now it's time for your discussion board activity. Here, we want you to share a motivational strategy that you have found helpful to use with any student that you've worked with. Um, you can share this via a video actually showing the motivational strategy in play, or you might wanna share the materials for that motivational strategy so that other teachers can use those materials. Have fun with this one. It's really important to have a collection of motivational strategies. So we're hoping that in sharing your motiva motivational strategy, you'll be able to learn from others and others will be able to learn from you.